Now, as we look towards uh, Asia, we really want to look at the fiscal deficits because, you know, one of the things that we've been talking about pretty extensively is the shortfall that we've seen in, in, you know, the fiscal cliff or or the fiscal drag. And it's because you've had so many countries that have issued debt to to provide stimulus, to do something during COVID. And now you're seeing even more of that when you look at what is being done to try to kind of buffer energy and food prices. So when you look at the fiscal deficit in 2022 relative to 2019 in GDP, spending, you look at the Philippines, you look at Brazil, you look at Indonesia, India, you know, they're all running, uh, Brazil, they're all running some fairly sizable deficits. And that's when it becomes harder when you start looking at, well, what rate are they getting? And and rates in the U.S. are going up, which pushes rates up even higher in emerging markets. So the pressure remains. They're trying to raise rates. They're trying to stay in front of inflation. But as inflation goes up, the ability for them to maintain spending and to support their uh, constituents in terms of food and energy becomes harder and harder. And I think we're continuing to see those pressure points, which again, is going to see that I I would expect the change in deficit to come down a bit. Otherwise, they're going to be in 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 an even bigger problem as we get into 2023. So now when you start looking at Evercore ISI survey diffusion index for Chinese sales versus the PMI, now this is when I said before that it's not as good as some of the others. It's just because they're weighted to large, uh, the large corporations and and they're and some of the multinationals. I think there's only about 50 companies that are in this, and they miss out on some of the other bigger ones. Or you know here you can see it's up 21 U.S. multinationals. So you're not getting the full picture, but that's a very good, you know, kind of backstop as to where do they sit today? Because these, these are the guys that should be insulated a bit. And if they're slowing, it's a good assumption that they are slowing. Others are slowing either just as much or if not more than the large uh, multinationals, so, which is why the government is being so active and they're being so aggressive. So when you look at what Lee, uh, Kung, uh, what, uh, what Lee said, promised to refund companies 1.5 trillion renminbi in the uh, value added tax or VAT. So the idea is promote consumption driven investment, improve the cash flow of enterprises and strongly boost market confidence. So right now the expectations for uh, glo- uh, growth continues to get moved down from China. Now it's at 5% growth. And it's because there's multiple hits. I mean, you have inflation, you have the, the spread as we've shown before between PPI and CPI. We have you know just global growth slowing, Europe slowing, and we'll show why that matters in a minute. So you're seeing a lot of these pressure points with Russia, Ukraine, and then obviously COVID spreading within China with more areas locking down you know as, as early as last night, as late as last night, in terms of where some of these pressure points will be and the problems that there are going to remain, which is why Lee is trying to cut more uh, rev- uh, trying to cut more uh, taxes to try to reinforce this. But when you cut taxes, you also cut government revenue. And the government has been overspending for, I mean, given so is the US, obviously, but they've been doing it exponentially and keeps getting bigger and bigger. On Monday, the state council said that Remimbi 1 trillion of this refund will go to small and micro firms, the ones that have struggled. Micro firms will, will receive the rebate in April. Small firms will get theirs in May and June. So again, trying to accelerate this to keep employment up, trying to keep things moving. The remaining refunds will be dispensed between July and the end of the year and go to companies in manufacturing, scientific research, electricity, heat, gas, and water, software and IT services, ecological protection, transportation, storage, and delivery services. So again, they're trying to keep that stimulus coming down because the PBOC has not been able to do that much. And that will remain the case as we've been talking about with regards to the rates that they're charging. Now, while all of, the, all of this is happening, here is another little spat that is between China and Lithuania. China slashes imports from Lithuania amid a diplomatic dispute because Lithuania opened, uh, ha- is recognizing Taiwan and has a uh, demo- uh, I'm sorry, political relations with them. So this is their <clears throat> punishment, if you will, for doing dealings with Taiwan. They, uh, China continues to use trade as a battlefield. But... The EU contributed the most to China's total export growth in 2021. And again, not saying that Lithuania was was all of it, 
But when you look at what is happening to Europe, and you're looking at what's happening to Russia and and uh, I'm sorry, what um, Russia and Ukraine, you have to look at well, how much growth is the U.S. going to contribute? How much how much spending can the EU do? So contribution to exports, EU contribution. So you're seeing just U.S. contributions are that little that that um, that gold or yellowish uh, tan, if you will, uh, bar. So the the largest component of it were contrib- contrib- contributions to exports to the EU, contributions to exports to uh, to the U.S. I'm sorry. Uh, so the the U.S. is the um, <clears throat> is the light blue. So when you look at where this growth is, and you see the slowdown in Europe, it's going to be difficult to see some of these moves. So again, that's just more headwinds for where China is as pressure continues to mount. You know, you look at Evergrande, they've suspended trading again. A lot of these companies are saying that they're going to miss the March deadline to, to issue their audits because there's a lot of debt that is sitting out there that they have to recognize or try to come up with. And Evergrande apparently had $2 billion repossessed by a bank that they weren't expecting, <laughs> again, creating these underlying cash shortfalls because they were expecting to have that available. All of these problems, again, continue to re- uh, to rear their ugly head. All the while, China credit impulses fell. And this is what we've been saying. We've been saying from the beginning that China and the PBOC in particular was going to keep China, uh, credit impulses from going da- uh, going down, but they weren't going to really promote them to go up too much. It's just kind of sideways as they deal with excess of leverage. So all of this is happening as uh, as you know, COVID continues to grow. Uh, Thirteen thousand five hundred fifteen new domestically transmitted symptomatic uh, inf- infections. You know, up eight thousand. Worst outbreaks are raging in the northeast China's uh, Jilin uh, province. Uh, you know, you're continuing to see it continue to happen. But then on Friday, the National Development and Reform Commission published a notice outlining its plan to ensure food security. So they keep, so you have all the issues that are happening on the COVID side. You have all the supply chain issues. You have all the cost issues. So now they they have to go and talk about food. Food security matters rank high among Beijing priorities this year as part of broader efforts to deliver macroeconomic stability in the run up to the 20th Party uh, Congress. Most of the NDRC's to-do list was familiar, something that we've talked about, and they've been making made it very known. But carefully monitor for, for, uh, fertilizer supply and prices, and intervene where necessary. Ensure chemical fertilizer producers get the raw materials and production inputs they need. As many fertilizer producers up get as many up and running as possible. Ensure that enterprises managing spring and summer ferts reserves have the loans and transportation needed. Those summer FERTS reserves are new this year, and it sounds like funding and stocking them is already posing a challenge. The continuous concerns remain, but they don't have the ability to spend blindly to support all these pieces, which is why we keep seeing pressure on growth. And this is just putting it into perspective with where Chinese uh, you know, movements are on, on, on credit impulses and what it means for Japanese tool orders, as we talked about with Europe and others, is... China is not going to be the growth engine everybody's expecting. And that is the problem when you look at global growth and expectations. So here you can see that uh, Japan machine tool orders down China's 2021 uh, tightening cycle. Mind that gap, as (laughs) as it says. So when you look at the four financial uh, main financial regulators all issued their own statements following the FSDC meeting, but only those from the securities regulator and the CBIRC warrant and in any attention. And here's why. Because when you start looking at the health and, and where financial regulators are looking, you have to keep the, that, again, that, that credit impulse in mind. So maintain moderate growth in new loans. So trying to, again, moderate new growth. So not exponential growth, but moderate growth because you need to stimulate. They're going to try to stimulate, but you also are are rolling debt. So you need to have that available. Increase the supply and cut the the cost of credit for small firms. They've been trying to do that for, for over a year now. Encourage banks and insurers to better support innovative firms. Promote banks to issue loans for property M&A. Again, trying to just kind of backhandedly support the property sector. Support healthy developers acquiring good projects. Tough to find right now. And continue the rectification of internet platforms. So the only new commitments from the CBIRC were the, the following. 
guide insurers to allocate more funds to equity assets, encourage wealth management products to invest more in equity. There are very few things the CBR, uh, CBIRC can do to help buoy confidence, and that's why you know we, we still see a lot of downside and concerns in the uh, Chinese markets. So the credit stress for the Chinese dollar debt is at a new record, and I think that's the biggest problem is because everyone looks at this as an onshore issue. They have a lot of uh, offshore capacity, and a lot of it is denominated in dollars. So the annual annual reporting season ends March 31st, and it will, will produce the first fully audited statement since the industry's liquidity crisis spread. Previously, hidden debts are likely to appear on balance sheets, pushing up measures of leverage, according to analysts at, at CCB International Securities. Restrictions on uh, the use of home sale proceeds may reduce freely available cash while impairments are a risk. The analyst said uh, shareholder payouts will be slashed to the lowest level since 2013. So again, a lot of pressure remains in this sector with very little coming and uh, and, and improving in that region. China's supply uh, pressure index uh, is back to near all-time highs, and we see this as going, getting worse. Again, are harking back to the comments on making available fertilizers. Is it available? Now they're worrying about summer, which means that they're having an issue along the whole supply chain in terms of making sure that they can uh, fill their, their, uh, their needs. China urban and total employment growth continues to struggle. Urban employment growth is slowing with the, with the decline of rural urban migration. Total employment growth in China is already declining as the population ages and fertility declines more headwinds to economic growth. So then when you start looking at home prices, home prices new and secondhand continued to be negative with more pressure and more negative pricing set to come. As China real estate price index, residential buildings and secondary market were again, the number of cities reporting positive growth continued to fall with only uh, 30 showing uh, positive growth, which just means that more home sale prices will be negative. Vietnam banks undercapitalized relative to regional peers. Again, bank capitalization, where is leverage going, how much leverage is available, which again is going to weigh on, on how, how long these countries can last before they have to push through more price increases and take away some of those subsidies. All the while, India continues to kind of bump along the bottom. Uh, The sales manager index was uh, slightly negative. Business confidence is waning. Market growth is also starting to stay fairly flat. With sales growth flat, uh, prices charged increasing slightly, staffing levels de- declining as profit margins also come under pressure. Again, all the same things that we've been talking about and the headwinds that continue to persist. But South Korea, on the uh, you know ending on a positive note, you can see that imports remain strong through the first 20 days. Exports came down slightly, but again, I, we expect this to remain elevated and strong as exports continue to be robust out of a lot of the ASEAN nations. Yeah, that's what we have for you today. Um, we won't have the econ show next week. I will be in uh, in Houston giving a speech. So uh, uh, you're going to miss us again for one more week, but we will be, we'll, we will be ba- oh, back the first week of April. So don't worry and stay tuned and we'll catch up on anything that we missed. Thanks again for watching. I'm Mark Rosano, founder and CEO of C6 Capital Holdings, coming to you from Primary Vision Network.